It's going to sound like a joke, but it's not. Two men walk into a convenience store. Covering their faces are green Halloween masks, and one is holding a gun. Saeed Sharwani, father of four and part-time employee at the store, becomes animated upon seeing the masked men, causing one would-be robber to run out the door. The gun-wielding robber remains, hopping over the counter to take cash and lottery tickets. Saeed runs around the counter to deter the robber and is subsequently shot in the chest. He manages to get to the phone and call 911, but all he can manage to say is, why? Clark City 911, what's the address of your emergency? Hello? Hello? Shortly after, he passes away. The crime matches the MO of suspects who have recently engaged in several robberies in southeast Wisconsin. While previously none of the suspects were brought in for questioning due to lack of evidence needed for a search warrant, the current crime is a homicide in addition to being a robbery. The suspect, Kenneth Thomas, is issued a search warrant. While Thomas is not at home, the search warrant leads to a collection of physical evidence and anecdotal evidence by way of interviews with Thomas's roommates, linking Thomas to the crime. Thomas is later located and brought in for questioning. I got a t-shirt on over here. Can you take it off? Okay. Go ahead. Yep. Take that off. Alright, get on. Um, you wearing just the pants? Uh, underwear. Okay. You just keep your hands up. There you go.
Thomas begins scanning the room for cameras and quickly finds one. His body language changes after realizing that he's being monitored. This is a rather clever rapport building technique on the part of the detective. Not only does it elicit a smile from the suspect, but it also tells the suspect that the interviewer is only an employee doing his job. He cannot make special deals, and he's not the top brass of the organization. It allows the detective to place himself at a level closer to the suspect so that they may talk more freely. Basically, he knows most of the information that needs to be talked about, okay? He briefed me, I was able to review some things, and since we were able to talk a little bit, you know me. Yeah, I talk to stranger, right? Yeah, you cool people. All right, so figure we might as well sit here and talk together and, and try to square things away, okay? Um, I was filling um, him in on a um, little bit about you, okay? Yeah. You know, you're living in West Dallas, you're working for your mom, selling. Um, you're also going to school, mm -hmm. business, okay? Fill him in on all that type of stuff. Um, A lot of things have been going on. A lot of people have been saying lots of different things. Okay? Now, you're from Milwaukee, right? Mm hmm And other than your visits to Mississippi, like you told me about before, mm -hmm. um, you're always in Milwaukee. Yeah. Okay. Um, every place does business differently. Okay? Mm -hmm. Milwaukee. I can tell. <laughs> Milwaukee does their things their way. Yeah. Waukesha does their thing our way. Okay? It's all a little different. Okay, but in the end, what our job is, is to find out a few things, okay? Number one, it's the truth about what's going on, mm -hmm. okay? And number two, and I think personally, most important, is why things happen, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of misconception out there amongst a lot of people. What does that mean? It, um, misunderstanding. People mm -hmm. don't understand how things work sometimes, mm -hmm. whether it's something on TV or on the news. Sometimes they they don't really tell it like it is, okay? But basically, what we do out here in Waukesha yeah. is when we investigate stuff, we actually don't take sides, okay? We talk with everybody, and we listen to what everybody has to say, 
okay? We don't make any decisions beforehand, all right? It's important that we don't take sides because we don't want people on one side to say one thing and distort it or make it look bigger or worse than it really is, okay? And we don't want the other side to try and see if they can get away with something, okay? Our job is to find out the truth about what happened. It's important to hear everybody's side because if we don't hear everybody's side, then what are we left doing? What you have to do. We're left taking the information that we have been told and going with that. Um, and it wouldn't be fair to people if we didn't get the whole story and a decision would be made based on just partial information, right? Uh -huh. While what the detective is saying is in part true, as we will see later, the detective is employing the read technique, which is a manipulative method of interrogation designed to extract a confession. A suspect unfamiliar with the read technique, which accounts for 99% of the suspects in a police interrogation, is likely to be convinced by the detective's appeal to fairness and attempting to get the whole story by interviewing everyone. This is the first phase of the read interrogation, and the goal is to lower the suspect's defenses. The Reed technique was invented shortly after physical violence was banned from use in police interrogations in the United States after the Supreme Court case Brown v. Mississippi in 1936. At the time, the Reed technique was seen as a non-violent approach at forcing a confession from a suspect. Needless to say, this interrogation strategy has led to many false confessions due to its manipulative nature. In this particular case, however, the police already have enough evidence to convict Thomas. At this point, they are hoping to reduce the cost and time of the conviction by extracting a confession. The detective thus employs a textbook read technique interview strategy, which typically starts with about 30 minutes of rapport building before the heat is turned up. You don't want to be people saying stuff about other people if it's not the truth or if parts are left out so or things I don't understand. She said, hey. That's part of it, okay? Yeah. There's other things that we need to understand why things happen the way they happen, okay? When people go about and do their business, whether it's legitimate business or, or illegitimate business, okay, they do things a certain way. They start out with a thing like when you go door to door selling your, your goods for your mother's business, okay? You want to build a business, you want to get your name out there, you want to be people familiar with your company's name and say, hey, I bought some good products from this company, they made my house look nice, I'm gonna tell my neighbor and they wanna do that, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't want people saying bad things about that, right? If they do, when you go knock on that person's door, says, I heard about you, I don't wanna I don't wanna deal with you. Okay? We wanna make sure that we get the full understanding of what's going on from your perspective and not everybody else's perspective. Okay? We need to understand is if if, if someone had an idea about how something was going to go, and it didn't turn out that way, why didn't it turn out that way? Did something happen that was unexpected? Did, did, did something happen that surprised that individual and ended up being like, oh no, how do I deal with this? And, and something went wrong. And it wasn't an intentional thing, it was just something that, damn, why did it have to happen that way, okay? But we need to understand that, and we need to understand it from everybody's perspective. You understand what I'm saying? Because if you don't understand it from everybody's perspective, what ends up happening? Yeah, you got to do what you have to do. People are going to make decisions based on limited information, and then those decisions may be, in the end, not appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay? And when a decision has to be made, it should be made on all the information available out there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't think that's water? Or would you rather be my stuff? I'm just, I'm just, you know, very cautious about my life. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, I understand. Uh, you know, I was taught like that, raised like that. Okay. Well, that was sealed. You saw that was sealed. Yeah, I know it could be sealed. It's still, you know, things <laughs> happen to it. I, I know, trust me. I watch a lot of CSI and okay. Earth 48 and all that good stuff. So I know. What do you like about those shows? I don't like the shows at all. Why are you watching that? To see how you guys work. Okay. But you know that's TV. Yeah. Like CSI. That's real. That, that is real. CSI, 
CSI, you know how fast they solve a crime in CSI? How fast? In 60 minutes, that's how long the show is. Yeah, that's real. We well, don't solve a show in 60 minutes. I know, but uh, it, it, some, some of you guys solve things like this. In some cases, yeah. yeah. Okay, in other cases, it's important to be thorough. Don't you think that's right? Mm, yeah, you know. Okay, don't you think it's important for us to get all the information that's available out there and to get the truth as to mm. how things happen? Mm -hmm. Of course, we should talk. Exactly. But what's most important about it Besides, is... Besides, I have to take my coat. This coat is hell. You want, you want it? Yeah, I really, I really like yeah, my coat. Yeah, yeah. You go set. That's not a problem. It's okay. It's not a problem. problem. Thomas made a smart decision here by asking for his own coat instead of a blanket. So well, I just want to make sure that you can read these over. Yeah, ain't got much in the way of blankets, but that'll work, man. Huh? It'll at least cover you up a little bit. So if you could just write. Uh, yeah. Asking whether others were brought in for interviews is a telling question. Thus far, Thomas has attempted to give the impression that he does not know why he's being questioned. Yet he asks whether others are being questioned, clearly concerned whether his accomplices have given police any information. For detectives, this is exactly the type of question they want to hear, as it demonstrates a curiosity from the suspect as to exactly what evidence the police are in possession of. Curiosity has killed the cat in many police interrogations causing the suspect to continue forward in an interrogation just to see what evidence the police will pull out, when the smart decision would be to end the interview. In fact, one common approach in the re-technique is to tease the suspect with hints of yet unrevealed evidence when the suspect seems close to shutting down. When Thomas reduces his cooperativeness or ceases giving new information, the detective can pull out the other interviews later as a trump card. For now, the detective will remember Thomas's question and, as Thomas is currently highly cooperative, will tell the lie that Thomas is the only one being subjected to an interview. For now, just you, yes. Okay. Okay? Okay. So there's some, some things that we'd like to talk about. Yeah. Find out a little bit more about you, about you and Waukesha. Okay? We'll do that. Yeah, we'll All right. Excellent. All right. You said you're on paper, right? Yeah. So you've been around the block. Yeah. You know how, how things yeah, work. What do you mean around the block? Dealt with the cops before. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I told the, I told the trooper. That's why I'm on papers. Right. Like if I wouldn't ever said nothing, I could be at home off of probation just chilling. But no, I I helped the police get the guys who it was, and you know, not okay. all everything on me. So what happened to those guys? They did the time. Okay. Then I hope to try to you. Okay, but they did time? Yeah. You didn't get time? Yeah, yeah. I did like 45 days and three years on paper. That was the plea. Oh, time. 45 days in the house? Yeah, house correction. Oh, that's nothing. What those guys have to Shit, do? Shit, it was. Well, was, that, was, that, was that bad? I'm not used to being away from my home from my mom. Uh, I understand that. What did the other guys end up doing? I, I really don't want to remember. I know they had some guy like a couple years stuff. Okay. See, it was, the case was more about, uh, it was, it was a burglary, mm -hmm. stolen property, okay. and driving without honest consent. See, I didn't have nothing to do with the burglary or none of that. I just, you know, I had got the car and my fingerprints was in it, so I told him how I got the car. Okay. Oh, what you So he got the in there. <sighs> Who put the uh, driver with the honest consent? Okay. Because you were in the car and your fingerprints were there. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't. Right. You can't undo that. It happened. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. 
No, it is what it is. So they, they may get us a little time in the house and then put you on paper. Mm -hmm. and paper sucks because, as you said, on the way here, you can't smoke weed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I sing and I do music, too. And that's my like, little side thing I do. Okay. All right. So you you put, like, uh, songs and videos out? Yeah, I'm all over here. Nice. <laughs> on the Internet? I'm, all, I'm everywhere. Do you, you YouTube it, or how do you do it? YouTube. Okay. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Okay. All kinds of stuff. Yeah, I'm all over the way. Thank you. Uh, what's, what's the biggest number of hits you got on a video? Probably like 2,000. Really? Uh, it's more than that. I couldn't tell you, man. I, that's the first time, though, when I first put my first video on there. Yeah. It was like 10,000. Okay. 10, 10 9,000. So okay. that, that's why you want to set up that warehouse for talented people, because you're one of them talented people. Yeah, yeah most definitely. You know, I dance, and I'm a, I'm a good artist. I could draw you. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, good. Excellent. All right. Well, there's some things that we, we need to talk about. Same time, we'd like to clear up, so let's get to it, okay? Uh -huh. um, I know I got your name, address, all that fun stuff on the way here. Uh -huh. um, a couple of things I forgot to ask you about. How far did you get to school? I dropped out of 12th grade. 12th grade? Okay. Yeah. Did you try to get GED or HSCD or anything like that? Yeah. How'd that work? Uh, I don't know how I'm you know. Just because all the things happening in my family, you know, there's been a lot of deaths. Okay. A lot of people going to jail. Okay. You know, the family just breaking apart. So a lot of stress out there in your life. Yeah, hell yeah. Okay. So you got that. You're helping your mother out with her business. You're going to school. You're working on your own business ideas. There's a lot. You got a lot of things going on. Hell yeah. Okay. Understand that. Okay. All right. What we do here at the Walker Shop Police Department, before we talk to anybody about any investigation, we read them their rights. So, obviously, you've had your rights read here before? Yeah. Okay, so that's nothing new to you? No. Okay, that's fine. So, we just do this as a matter of routine? Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to read this to you. If there's something you don't understand or you have a question, just let me know. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, first one is you have the right to remain silent. Second one, if you decide to give up that right, anything you say may be used against you in court. Third one, you have the right to consult with an attorney and have an attorney present during any questioning. Fourth one, if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to you by the court. And the last one is understanding the above rights. Are you willing to speak with me? Okay. About, uh, about what? Well, I need a, a, a few things. Okay. We, 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 I know. I know what this is. This what my son is. Yeah. I need to know. I don't. I, look, I still. I've been locked down for a day and a half. Okay. I still don't know what is everything about. Okay. You know, they just came and got me, and it was a bunch of things on this sheet saying that I was involved in, but I don't, you know. What were the things that you saw on the sheet that you were involved in? They said drugs and guns. Okay, that was a search warrant that you asked about at yeah. your apartment. Okay, and I and I explained to you on the way here that that was something that Milwaukee was dealing with. Okay, and now, I, I, that's what I asked about. I asked, like, because they told me, they said, Walker Shaw, well, actually it was me. When I was in the cell, they, they was talking to this guy, and they said, no, you got to wait for Walker Shaw County because they're coming to get you. Right. But turns out it wasn't him that was coming to get it. It was me that come to get So I, as I asked, I was like, what they come to get me for? Like, what is this is about? Okay. What, what, we, found out, was told. Okay. what we found out from Milwaukee yeah. when they did the search when they collected evidence. Okay. And some of the evidence that they collected was tied to an incident in Walker Shaw. Mm. Okay. So what was the evidence they, they collected? Clothing, and they did find a gun in the apartment. Yeah. Okay, and other things. Okay. okay. Again, Thomas demonstrates an interest in the specifics of the evidence the police possess. The detective once more withholds the full, truthful answer, only mentioning clothes and a gun. He intentionally avoided mentioning the discovery of more damning evidence, such as the masks used in the robbery and the stolen lottery tickets. And that stuff was used in a robbery in Waukesha. Uh, okay, so we need to understand, all right, hey, where did that custom stuff come from? How to get in the apartment? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Okay? Your apartment, right? Yeah, it's my apartment. Okay, so wouldn't it make sense that we ask the people who live there about it? Yeah, sure. So that's why we want to talk. All right? Fair enough? Fair enough. You want to talk then? Yeah. Excellent. So what I'm going to ask you to do, your answer is yeah. So I just need you to put your initials next to that answer and then sign your name right there for me. KT? However you initial something. KT works good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I'm 
mean? So Milwaukee does the search warrant mm -hmm. at your apartment, and you're there. And you were telling me that your brothers and sisters were also there. Yeah. Okay. Help me out here. Who was all there besides you? Who we had that yesterday night? Had the search warrant. Yeah, when, when, when the Milwaukee police came. Who was all there? Everybody they got. My brothers. Yeah, but you... Help me out with the uh, names. Uh, uh, Deontay Stinson. Deontay Stinson. Stinson. Okay, and he is, is he your older or younger? Oldest. Okay. And who else? Shakendra Stinson. Shakendra? Yeah. Okay. Levante Stinson. And Shakendra's uh, sister? Yeah, oldest sister. And who else? Delicia Stinson. Delicia? Yeah. And who's she? Sister? Cousin. She's a cousin. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got Dante, Shakendra, Delicia. Who else was there? I don't think of these guys. I don't know their name, but they live next door. This seems to be Thomas's plan B. While at first he denied everything, Thomas realizes now that the detective has some evidence against him. He is assuming that the detectives do not have his accomplices in custody and hereafter attempts to pin the crime on his accomplices while preserving an image of not really knowing who they are so as to avoid deeper questioning. For the detective, this is a good development, as Thomas is now beginning to give information implicating the other actors in the crime. Were the detective to have prematurely shown his hand, namely the hard evidence against Thomas, Thomas likely would have gone into defensive mode instead of deflective mode. And his neighbors might not have been brought up. Oh, they were there at the warrant? Uh, no, they weren't. They weren't. They was part that. I think they were there. I don't know who they... I, don't, I wasn't, you know... Okay. I couldn't see who they were. I took you. They took... I know they took everybody, though. Okay, so you think guys next door? No, I don't think. I know they were there. They, okay. they should have got them. Okay. All right. And All right. My baby brother is Levante Stinson. Levante, okay. Me? Okay. Well, you mentioned on the car because you asked me about why did they use a flashbang. Yeah. And I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. But and then you mentioned that the baby was there. Yeah. Okay. So the baby was there too. Yeah. Okay. Was the baby mama there? Yeah. Okay. What's her name? Uh, Shamika Bounds. Shamika. Okay. Okay. And the two guys next door? What do you mean by next door? In the next Cross apartment? The wall, next apartment. Okay. And what's their names? Uh, I actually don't even know these guys. We just was hanging up, kicking it. You know, they just came, kicking it? They came, they came back last night and bought a lot of shit. Okay. We kicked it, smoked it, we... Okay. Do you know, I mean, you may not know their full names. Do you know a first name or a street name or a nickname or something like that that they go by? Something. You got it tatted over their eyebrows. Okay. I think one was named. Well, I don't. I, I, I really couldn't tell you, but it said "Never Fold Under One." Okay. Never fold. Okay. Under one. What was the other guy's? He had a tattoo that said. Uh, what did it say? Better not. Something better. Better, better, it's something about better. Something um, better? Yeah, okay. Some, some shit like that. Okay. All right. Do you remember a nickname or something they called each other or something, somebody, you know, like... Fool. Fool, they're from Chicago, so they say fool. Fool? Fool. They say fool. Fool. Fool? Yeah, like fool. Like, what up, fool? Okay, but did they use a name or just... No, that's what they call each other, fool. Okay. 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 So they from Chicago call each other full. Okay. Yeah, they're cool people. All right. I'm having a come over and stay full time. Do do they live there alone across the hall? Uh uh, they stay with with the uh this this uh lady. But actually, the lady kicked them. Well, was supposed to be kicking them out, so I let them come stay in my mine for a few, few days. You know. Okay. What's who's the lady? Uh, her 
mom lived downstairs from me. Okay. So that's her daughter, you know. Okay, do you know her name at all? Amanda. Amanda? Yeah. Oh, is, is her mom the one living downstairs, the one that you don't like? Or she yeah. don't like you? Yeah, she don't like me. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, you were telling me about your neighbor you didn't like. No, yeah, I don't like her. Okay. She didn't like the guys either that understood that our daughter had in her house. Uh huh. Because, you know, they, they, they was taking her rent money and, you know, she's back on rent payment and all this other stuff. Oh. So you think they were taking advantage of her? Yeah, they were taking her. I just let them come over. You know, I'm a cool guy, so I let, okay. them, I let them come stay in my apartment for a few days. Okay. Okay. When was that? What, like the past few weeks? They was here. They've been in my apartment. Okay. All right. So, you said something about last night or something. You mean the night before the search warrant? Last night. They they were there. I'm surprised the police didn't get them. Okay. They may have just walked up because... They were they at were my house, though. I don't okay. know. Were you sleeping when this happened? Yeah, I fell asleep. Okay, so they, they, they were there asleep, when yeah. you were awake still? No, no. when I fell asleep, they were there. When I went to bed last right. night, they were there. Like, they stayed there. Okay, last night mean the night before the warrant? No. Because you stayed at the Monkey Jail last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you were Okay, right. yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, yeah, right. sure. yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. I understand. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, All right. They, yeah, they stayed there. Okay. They was there. They were there about a week or so. Yeah. Okay. So they were staying there a week, okay, and then you guys were just kicking and stuff? Yeah, one was tall, boy. He... Okay. And well, how old is that guy? Uh, he was in his, he was like 28, yeah, 28. Okay. And one was short. Okay. Was he bald too? Uh-uh. Okay. He had red hair. Red hair? How long was his red hair? I mean, you got reddish hair too, was it? Yeah, like, it wasn't, no, he was just red. Like, I can't say you got your hair red. It, it was just something like this. It was, it was brighter than yours? Yeah. Okay. Because the night before that, we all went and blind our hair and shit. Oh, okay. That's why you see my brother with blind tips. Yeah. And you okay. see my oldest brother with the blind patch right there. Right, okay. Yeah, so okay. we weird. Is that her? He. Oh, he, okay. My, I said my brother. They okay. got blind tips. They got blind tips, okay. And a blind patch and you know, all this other shit. So one was uh, tall with blonde or bald head and the other in 28 and the other shorter one about how old yeah, is he? Yeah, he was in his state, like 23, 24. Okay. A little stocky. A little stocky? Yeah. What about the other guy, the tall guy? He's skinny, smile. Skinny? Right. Yeah. But they from Chicago, though. Okay, where in Chicago? They say what neighborhood? No, they just say they're from the projects. Okay. Oh, that's projects down there. You ever been to Chicago? No. No, oh, okay. All right. So what brings them up here? They said they were doing our shit down there. They burnt oh, their city. I can't, I can't uh, understand they what they did. They burnt they burnt their city up. Oh. What do they mean by that? When when you when they, someone tells you that what they did that shit. They did that shit so they got these on there. Yeah, they had, they had, they had to move. move. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they how they start hanging out with a man? I mean, what's her story? I don't know. No, I don't know. They met. They probably met somewhere. You know, off the Dayline or something. You know, she's a big girl, got a little sense of thing about herself. So they, most likely they probably met off the Dayline. Okay. And he, the, the short one dated her. Short one dated her. Okay. So, the night before the search warrant said you, they said they brought some stuff over and you rolled some up, smoked some? Yeah, some weed. Okay. They had a lot of money. They did? How much money did they have with them? I can't tell you. I know it's just a lot of money. Okay. All right. What time did they roll by? It was late night. Oh, what time? I couldn't tell you, sir. Okay. Honest. Okay. Dark no, out? It was, yeah, it was dark out. How much weed did they bring with them? Mm, like a half But they they were there already and we were just sitting there bored, you know. We was all sitting there bored. They were there and they came over, you know, they just sitting, we all looking at each other laughing and kicking it and they was like, We'll be right back. 
I think they came back like 30 minutes or okay. to an hour. Okay. So did they show up with the money in the week before that or after that? That's after that. That's after, after that. After they came, when they came back, then they had everything. Okay. Okay, so you guys are just sitting around? Yeah. You and your brothers and sisters and cousin? Yeah. Okay, all right. Then they left? But you don't know? No, they, I, I never, I've never seen them leave. They were still there when I went to, I went in the room and like laid down, you know. Oh, so you don't know if they left the, the apartment or not? No. Okay, but when you came back out of your room, then they had money and weed? No, it was like, How'd that work? Listen, listen, that's, listen, that's listen. That's why, I, yeah. Listen, first, we was all kicking it that night. Yeah. They leave, come back. Okay. Then they had everything. Then that's when we started oh, to kick it. Okay. But after we got done kicking it, I went to my room. Oh, okay. I see. And laid down. Uh-huh. Then I dozed off. It was still, they, you know, they still, they had the music playing. They were still sure. doing their thing. All right. But after that, I fell asleep. I don't remember if I, uh, I thought they were still there. That's why I asked if the police had got them, too. Oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. Well, I appreciate you um, explain that to me. All right. Yeah, but these guys, they hot heads. How are they hot heads? They is. They t they do. They hot heads. Okay. So when they came back with this money and this weed, did they say where they went? No. Okay. They said, and like I told you, I'm going to get you, fool. And I told you, I'm going to come turn up with you. It's like, dang, he really... He went mm -hmm. so, You know, we kicked it and all this other good shit. Okay. So you guys roll some blunts? Yeah. Who rolls the best? He do. He do? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, re I really haven't been smoking weed. I just started back smoking weed when they, when they came, you know? Yeah. Get in and shit. Sure, I hear I know I, I wasn't supposed to be smoking weed, man. I'm on probation and all this other okay. shit. Well, we ain't going to worry about that. It's no big deal. I thought that happened in Milwaukee or whatever was that was anyway, so I don't really care about that. Mm. So alright. So when they what were these guys wearing that night? When they uh, left and came back, remember? Yeah. They had on the same thing they left out with pajamas. Why they not they both have pajamas on. They had pajamas on? What yeah. kind of pajamas? Um, like checkers. Notably Thomas's story about the men he's trying to pin the crime on is exactly the same as the true story, only with Thomas being replaced by a mystery man. He's taking the I've been framed angle, which allows him to simply tell the truth, only without having to admit that he's the main actor of the crime. In a way, this is better than lying, as Thomas need not keep track of his lies, and consistency is a given. However, the fact that Thomas's information matches exactly to the police evidence is naturally suspicious. Witnesses often forget or misremember facts, but Thomas, playing the witness, remembers all the right details. In essence, Thomas has just agreed to the police's narrative of the crime, and now the detective's only task is to show Thomas was involved. Okay. What else? Hmm. I think one had a big ass brown coat. Okay. But when he came back, he didn't have a coat no more. Okay. I forgot how the tall one was dressed. Okay. You don't remember what the tall one was wearing at all? Mm mm. the weed you guys smoke up. Alright. They were talking about anything? Anything unusual? Anything that surprised you? It was, it was, it was hyper. Hyper as hell. Like, they were hyper? They, yeah, it was happy as hell. Um, they were they, hyper and happy? Yeah. Okay. Alright. What do you think? I think he, I think he came in my room and said, I'm gone, folks. What he said, he said, I'm gone, for but I was too sleepy. I was high as hell. I was high as hell, so I really, really? I really couldn't, you know, picture who, who it was. But one, yeah. of, but one of my people, because they was, obviously, if they didn't get the dudes, they left. 
Okay. So I think he came back that night and said, I'm gone, folks. But I was asleep. I don't remember mm -hmm. what the fuck was happening. Okay. All right. We sleep with our door open, so. Oh, yeah? I'm okay. not. All right. So what about this gun that they found in the apartment? Where, where, did, where did it come from? I can tell you. I really, I really can tell you. I don't even know where they found the gun at. Okay. They found it in a diaper box. A diaper box? Yeah. Was it put, like, when was it put there? When was it put there? Who, 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 are you talking about my nephew's diaper box? Yeah. Uh, really? Mm hmm Yeah, it was put there, then. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, you know, normally, especially with the baby in the room, you keep a gun in a diaper box. No. You know? See, they, it's funny, though. You know how, how everything gives up. They gone. So, do these guys have a gun? Yeah, they got hella lots of guns. They got lots of guns? What kind of guns do these guys got? Got a few handguns. Okay, when did you see What kind of gun was this? This is a handgun. What, I know it was a handgun. This is a black it's one. A black, like what type of handgun? This is a nine. A nine? Yeah. Yeah, they got shit like that. Do they? What? The detective has attempted to respond to Thomas's question without giving the complete answer, which is the actual make of the gun. Again, the detective wants to withhold evidence linking Thomas to the crime until absolutely necessary. So he plays dumb about the details of the gun, going from handgun to black gun to 9mm. As Thomas's questions push the resultant answer increasingly toward revealing the actual make of the gun, the detective becomes more uncomfortable, as evidenced by his body language. This common but oft ignored motion is called spontaneous facial self-touch and is an unconscious self-soothing reaction to stress. The read technique emphasizes interrogator control over the interview, and detectives can sometimes lose their composure when suspects attempt to take control of the conversation. When's the last time you seen him? When's the last time I seen him? Yeah. The guys? Yeah. I just told you tonight that everything happened, you know, oh. right before they came and got us. Oh, they had the gun that night? Yeah. Oh, okay. Which one had it? It's a short one. Short one? Uh, yeah. Okay. But what, what, type, what kind of gun did he have? Sounded like the one you was all black. You know, I, it was all black. The one sounded like the one you said just. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, he had a black handgun? Mm -hmm. Okay. Before you said something about a high point. Yeah, that's what he said it was. He said he had a high point right here, Pope. Okay. This is what the detective wanted. Instead of having to reveal to Thomas the make of the gun, the detective extracted from the suspect the actual gun model, a high point C9. One criticism of the read technique is that the police will sometimes throw all the evidence on the table and then employ manipulative strategies to make a suspect connect himself to the crime, sometimes leading to convicting innocent suspects. To avoid having interrogations being thrown out for such reasons, Detectives prefer for the suspects to bring up the evidence themselves when possible. As the police already have a preponderance of evidence against Thomas, they know that if Thomas talks enough, he will likely bring up the evidence himself, which is exactly what has been occurring through the interview thus far. Probably was his income. Probably was his? Yeah. You see where he get it from? Did you say that I see where he get it from? Yeah. They go, they go down to the city and get all the guns and come back here. Okay. What other guns? You said they had lots of guns. One had a, um, it was a revolver. Okay. Who was the short one or the tall one? Tall one. one. What did you see him with that? The night they were there, they had all the guns. They had like three guns on. Okay. Who had the tall one? The tall one had a revolver? Two revolvers. Okay. What color were they? Silver. See? It was like this, like this. Okay. You know what, what rounds? 38s, 357s, 22s. I didn't tell you. You don't know? Really they didn't say? You know. Okay, you're not a big gun guy? Listen, I am going to tell you. I mean, I'm going to tell you this, though. Okay. They asked for some, uh, for some books. My mama gun is registered. Oh, your mama has a gun? Yeah, it's okay. registered. She has a 9 millimeter. Okay, all right. I had got some bullets out of my bag, and I had gave to those guys. Okay. What kind of bullets, you know? They were nine bullets. Nice. Yeah. Okay. What color were they? What color were the bullets? Yeah, do you remember? Sometimes they come in different colors, like brass casing or silver casing. 
they were they were uh, silver, not silver. They're like brownish. Brownish? Okay. Yes. How many bullets did you give them? Like uh, nine. No, actually, I gave them I gave them four because the other ones I put up on my cabinet. Where was your cabinet? When the police came in, they saw them. They saw the bullets. The yeah. cabinet in the living room or in the bedroom? My, in my room. In your room, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you, you put those bullets there? Yeah. Okay, all right. I was going to give them back to my mom. Okay. He already asked, so he said, I just need five. Okay, which one asked for the bullets? The short one. Okay. The, the, the tall one guns was fully loaded. Okay. So how many bullets did you give him? Just four. Four? You gave him four bullets? Yeah, yeah, five. Okay. Okay. Four or five? I don't. I, I couldn't. I really don't remember. Four or five? I think it's one of them. Okay. So then, when you gave him the bullets, where was that? That was that same night. What, where where were you in the apartment when when you did that? I gave him the bullets. Where was I? Was in my room. Okay. Was it just you and him, or was anybody else in there? Uh, it was me, him, and the other guy. And the other guy, the tall guy? Yeah. Okay. See, so nobody else didn't really know what was going on. Okay. But I kind of figured what they asked for the bullets for. They, 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 they you know, they, they stick up guys. They that's stick what, up guys? That's yeah, what they do? that's what they do. Are they talking that's about that? They, yeah, that's what I was telling you. They burnt up the city. They burnt okay. up uh, Chicago. Because they did stick up down there. Yeah, so they had to come here. They come here and... What, start burning up Milwaukee? Burning up Milwaukee. Okay. It goes along with it. Okay. Yeah, they changed the identification, though. What do you mean they changed the identification? They died of hair a lot. They died of hair a lot? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, one can't die of hair. One ball was, was bald. Right, I mean, he is the, the way he is. The, the short, the short okay. one, the short one through the... And the ball head is a never fold guy. Yeah, it's a never fold. Okay. Never fold. Okay. All right, so then, they, uh, how long were they at the apartment before they left with the, the bullets seen, and stuff? I, n I never seen them left. Okay. That's, that's the you... night we turned, everybody turned up. Okay. You know, I just got so, I got so high, I went in the room and laid down. Okay. I don't know, and after that, and I don't really remember what was going on. I was asleep, shit. Okay. I know they was having fun, though, you okay. know what I mean? Everybody was all around the house. Sure. Okay. Did you ever leave the apartment at all that night? Mm -mm. No? Mm-mm. All right. Anybody else ever leave the apartment that you're aware of? Mm-mm. No, not that I know of. Okay. Was that Amanda girl? Was she over kicking it with you guys, smoking? Mm-mm. No? Mm -mm. Was any other girl over? Other than the, the group, you know, your sisters, your cousin? Just them two. Just them two? Okay. They got a car? How do they get around? Uh, they have people. They call up people. They call up people? Like who? Yeah, like friends and shit. People that they already know here. Okay. You get rides from those people too? Who, me? Yeah. Hell no. I, I, like I told you, I don't, I, don't, I don't leave unless it's with my mom. Okay. I don't go nowhere unless it's with my mom. Okay. With her, I'm in the apartment. All right. Do you know who they called to go when they left? No, sir. I couldn't tell okay. you what they called. Okay. The car, I think, was a uh, color, was it? I don't even remember. You saw the car pull up, though? Not that night. I like the cars. Be, well, you like the color cars that do come and get them. Okay. It's, uh, it's a black one. Okay. Big van. A black one and what else? A big van. A big van? Okay. Yeah. Them like the only cars I saw before. Does anybody come up and say hey, we're here, or how did you know? Do you ever see the people who come down? Mm -mm. No, never got the car. Okay. They just be like, oh, I'll be back for. They come knock on my door and be like, I'll be back for. All right, all right. I just, I just start knowing you. Like, I only reason I know them because there's an incident that occurred with her daughter and me. What's that? And her her daughter, I guess, she kept coming over here to get her boyfriend mad 
the with the little short one. Mm-hmm. She dates the short one, and he, he like he came to approach us mm-hmm. on some like some tough stuff. Okay. And that's when mom was there. So I guess I got kind of guess mom kind of saved us because she had her 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 gun on her side. Right. You know? right. So I guess she kind of saved us because they came there on some beasty stuff like woo woo woo, you know, telling us. Like, don't be talking to these girls and, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I'm trying to be some tough guys, man. Big, big tough guys, man. That's all it is. So how'd that work out? We, I mean, we got cool. Like, I, I had no so much I lived there, you know what I mean? Okay. So I was like, man, I'm not on none of that, bro. I'm, I'm cool, but you come over chill anytime. Okay. So they started coming over chilling, but I could tell, man, they didn't like us. They wanted to, they wanted to beef with us anyways. Okay. Just on the behalf, they, they mama don't like us, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Her, 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 her daughter, um. Okay. Alright. Part of the evidence that they found yeah. was that gun, those bullets, yeah. some clothes, okay? They also found um, other items in there. Like a mask, a green mask? Yeah. Okay. Where did that green mask come from? The low quality of interrogation video makes it difficult to see, but Thomas makes revealing expressions as the detective affirms the discovery of the green masks in Thomas's apartment. At this point, Thomas knows that the police have conclusive evidence linking him to the crime and goes all in with the story of being framed by his neighbors. I couldn't tell you. I'm- I couldn't tell you where the fuck my green mask came from. Like I said, man, them, them guys, man, they came back there that night, man. They was rally up, man. Mm-hmm. It was really, you know what I mean? Like they, they, you could tell, like, when somebody done did something or something, you know? I, I knew they did something. I just don't know what they did, though. Okay. They came back. I got high, man. I got high. Okay. I got high and fell asleep, man. Well, now that we've been talking, what do you think they did out here in Waukesha? Man, uh, they did a mask, a gun, rob. Man, they robbed somebody, man. They robbed somebody. Probably came back and threw evidence off on us, man. Okay. That's what you think happened? Yeah, because they, 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 they not, if they not caught, if they didn't get, well, you know, caught, where is they gone? Uh-huh. You know what I mean? They gone. Right, right. So they out in the box still having fun while somebody else is going down for the shit they did. Okay. That's, a, that's exactly what happened. Okay. Do you understand why it's important that we talk and figure stuff out? Yeah, now I understand. You know, I was okay. I was lost, man. I was I didn't know what the hell was going on, man. I understand, man. And okay. it's fucked up, you know what I mean? Okay. So the part of what you understand is is not only do we talk to people that we get get evidence, we look at evidence, right? Yeah. Okay. And even though you watch CSI yeah. and the first forty eight stuff, you know, that's Hollywood and that's, you know, sort of like how it happens. Yeah. Okay. But in real life, it happens a little different, okay? In real life, it's a, it's a little more scientific and a little more specific. They don't put all that dramatic stuff in there. Right. They got to put the dramatic stuff in there for TV, right? Yeah. You need to be interested in watching it, right? Yeah. Okay, there you go. And obviously, we don't solve things in 60 minutes. All right. Okay, all right. it takes us some time, but there's a reason why it takes us some time. Because we want to get things right. All right. Exactly. The things that we do that... Things like they do is we do the fingerprint stuff and the DNA stuff and all that stuff. Yeah, but right? now, now when I ask you some questions. Sure, of course. How is this? You still haven't told me how is this leading back to me? Well, the evidence from the robbery is at your house. Yeah. Okay. Still, I, what would make, you know what I mean? Somebody would have to call in and be like, okay, these guys, they just did this and they did their location. The evidence from the robbery was found in your home. Yeah, I know, okay. I know, I know. You right, so that. when Milwaukee Police Department calls us and says, hey, remember that robbery you guys had? I go, yeah. He says, uh, the clothing, the gun, the uh, mask, and other items of evidence yeah. that was taken in the robbery yeah. is found at this house. Right. I says, okay. So we talk with everybody in the house. Mm. Okay? We've talked to everybody in the house. Right. Okay. So what everybody been saying? We talk to your brothers, your sisters. Yeah. Okay. We can't talk to everybody at once, right? Right. Okay. At some point in time, it's your turn to talk. All right. So that's what we're doing here now. Okay. okay. But in the same time, we're processing other evidence. Okay. We're processing surveillance videos. We're processing.
processing the gun. Okay, we're processing the ammunition. We're processing everything that was found. Okay, and we're trying to see, okay, how does this all match up? Where does this, where does this evidence take us? Okay, we look at the surveillance video, and we see how things all match up. Okay, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. Okay, and when you start putting the puzzle together, you don't know exactly, but as you get more pieces, you get a very clear picture that fits in. Okay, and what's fitting in is the evidence in our crib. Is the evidence at your crib, but more so is the evidence that you were in on that robbery in Waukesha. Right. Okay. Right. So that's what the evidence shows. Oh, well, run it back. Run it back. What you say? You said the evidence that what? The evidence and the information that we learned from everybody we talked to. Yeah. Shows that you were in on that robbery in Waukesha. Yeah, how was I in on it? How was you in on it? Yeah, you got you got my prints. You got my prints, my face on camera. Interviews with Thomas's roommates, friends, and siblings have revealed that Thomas has a habit of showing off his gun. However, after doing so, he would always wipe down the gun, exclaiming to one witness that he does not want his fingerprints on the gun. Thomas, with his degree in criminal forensic science from CSI University, knows for certain that if the police don't have your fingerprints or face, they are simply out of luck in regard to pinning a crime on you. Hence his confidence in this interrogation. Yes, we do. Yeah. yeah. I like to see all that. Huh? Well, I don't have it with me right now, obviously. Okay. Right. Why well, you don't have it with you, though? Let's check this out. Okay. If you if if that was me, mm-hmm. why why would you have all the evidence pointing out in front of us? You want to see all the surveillance video right now? No, obviously, we don't have one in the room. Uh, uh, you are about to see why this detective is playing the slow game. He's been patiently sitting on evidence for over an hour, just waiting for the right time. Instead of bringing out all the evidence immediately to attack Thomas, the detective saves the evidence to be brought out as counters to Thomas's denials. Watch this. Uh, 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 surveillance with my face direct on it. Yes, we do. We have that. No, yeah, yeah. So why you didn't show me pictures? Why you didn't show me pictures? Like this is you on this. Pictures? Yeah. This is the gun at your house. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is the gun in the diaper box. The shoes that you were wearing. This is the mask that you were wearing. Okay. Thank you for watching. I know we kind of cut it in the middle here, but this interrogation is actually 13 hours long. And being so, I've decided I'm going to break it into parts, just like the Samantha Wolford interrogation, which I'm still working on. If you like this interrogation, please let me know by clicking the like button.